Welcome back to Team O'Neill. I'm Wyatt. What we're going to do today are some good old-fashioned straight line braking drills. Uh, and we're going to measure the time and distance that it takes us to stop. So what we've got here is a 2008 Crown Victoria uh, and we have the ability to run it with ABS and without ABS. And as a driver, you and I and everyone else has the ability to go full ABS or full lockup or try threshold braking. Uh, and threshold braking again is just the maximum amount of braking you can use before either ABS kicks on if you have ABS or the wheels just lock up if you don't have ABS. Um, so we're going to do four tests today basically and get a little practice and see what we get for results with ABS, full ABS, panic stop, with ABS threshold braking, no ABS full lockup panic stop, and no ABS threshold braking. So let's give it a shot and we'll see what happens. All right, so round one, full ABS panic stop, stand on the brake pedal, hope that it stops. Uh, we're gonna measure that in two ways. I'm gonna brake hard at the big green cones and when I come to a stop, I'll get out and put a little orange cone by our front tire. Uh, so we'll have the rough distance, the problem is, Braking at 50 miles an hour when you go past the cone isn't the most precise thing in the world. So I'm going to go three, two, one, and when I hit the brake pedal, I'm going to hit the stopwatch and we come to a full stop. I'm going to measure the time that it takes us to stop. All right, so let's give it a try. Get this thing up to 50 miles an hour. Come on, there we go. Let's see it. That's 50 right there. Cruising, three, two, one, stop. Come to a stop now. 4.75, 4.75 seconds. And I will put a cone uh, adjacent to our front tire so we've got a distance measurement. All right, so full ABS chatter. We stopped in 4.75 seconds. The second round. I am going to threshold break with the ABS, which means I'm going to break hard, but if it really starts chattering, I'm going to back off and try adding a little and see what I can do, is see if I can beat the ABS system's full activation by modulating the brake and being a little easier on it and see if I can stop it quicker with the ABS on. Um, no preconceived notions. I'm not sure that I can beat the ABS, but we're going to try. Uh, just for the sake of science and technology, get up to 50 miles an hour. Stopwatch is zeroed. Where's my green cones? That's 50. We're going to cruise. Three, two, one. No way. No. 4.79. But we are maybe a car length past it. Um, I tried braking gently and honestly we just didn't stop for the first bit there till I braked harder, the ABS activated, I tried backing off and again it was either like we weren't stopping at all or the ABS was on, we're not stopping or the ABS is on. So uh, after like two of those kind of slow pulses I realized the ABS is better than not stopping so I just went full ABS. Um, it took very slightly longer in time and we're about a car length ahead, but I'll go put a, t a cone. I'll go put a cone next to the front tire. All right, so decent, you know, uh, pretty normal for a 4,000 pound car on gravel with ABS. F 50 to zero. I'll pace it out and get an actual distance, but it takes a long time to stop. Uh, and this is like really good conditions right now. You know, it's just drizzling a little, um, but that little bit of rain's kind of really making it tacky and it's, you know, as grippy as it's gonna get right now. So let's pull the ABS fuses and see if we're further, if we're shorter. Again, we're not trying to prove a point. We're not kind of coming out with saying anything off the get-go. We're just gonna see what happens. Round three, deactivated the ABS and we're gonna go full wheel lock up. Again, three, two, one, stand on the brake pedal, let the wheels lock and let that just kind of come to a screeching skidding halt and see 
how quickly we stop and in how much distance we can stop from 50 to zero on a gravel road. So let's get this thing up to 50 on our calibrated speedometer. There's 50. I'm going to cruise there. Three, two, one, stop. Three point eight, three point eight seven. So I'll call it three point nine, but three point eight seven seconds. And I'll put a cone by the tire. All right, so round four. What we're gonna do is no ABS threshold braking. I'm gonna do my best to try and stop in a shorter distance th and time than it took uh, with just full wheel lockup. Um, there's two ways to do that. One, you can either build up to threshold braking, and if you feel lock up, back off a little. The problem is that's kind of slow. So the way that I like to do it is I'm gonna brake hard, and the wheels are probably gonna lock up a little, and then I'm gonna back off slightly because I can get it to stop in a shorter amount of time and distance. Uh, if I brake hard and then ease off, uh, then if I try and just build up to hard brake, the car's already gonna have gone five car lengths more. Uh, if I do it that way. So let's give it a try. Drive, get up to 15 miles an hour. I'm gonna brake hard and ease off if I need to and try and find as quick as I can to threshold braking and see if I can beat that wheel lock up. There's 50 miles an hour. Three, two, one, go. Nope, nope, nope. 4.04. All right, so good entertainment. Um, what did we discover? Uh, basically, this 4,000 pound Crown Vic uh, today in light rain here on gravel with me driving it uh, stopped the shortest threshold braking with no ABS. To be honest with you, from the driver's seat, I got on the brakes hard, they locked up, I tried easing off, uh, and, and I never really eased off enough that those wheels turned much at all. So really, the difference between me threshold braking with no ABS and the full no ABS, uh, full lockup stop, I would say that this is within the, the tolerance of our measuring. Um, you know, did I break a foot sooner back there? Uh, you know, did I push the stopwatch button at exactly the time that I hit the brake pedal? Uh, I, I would call these two basically the same thing. If I did it 10 times, there would probably be 10 cones right here. Uh, you know, if this is 41 paces, this is 42. You know, call it yards. So that's you know, 120 feet, 123 feet, 125 feet, roughly to here. But the big difference is between the two no ABS stops and the two ABS stops. So let's pace that out. If we're at 41, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A little bit more than ten. Uh, yards difference, 30 feet, uh, from the no ABS versions to the best of the ABS versions. And the best of the ABS versions was full ABS chatter. Uh, stand on the brake pedal, brrr, let the system work, and that got me stopped here. Um, you know, is 30 feet the difference between running into something and not? Absolutely. Uh, but there we go. Now, me trying to threshold break with the ABS on, trying to modulate it, trying to beat the system, staying a little lighter, was worse. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half pace is worse. Uh, again, that's with me driving in that car today in the light rain. Uh, it was significantly worse. That's a couple car lengths worse when I tried to threshold break with the ABS system active, I ended up just with less brake pressure, less braking, less stopping. It took longer to stop. So that's probably no revelation for anybody, but it's always good to just go out with an open mind and do a quick test like this. Put some very rough numbers. Again, you know, we're not uh, running any kind of calibrated instrumentation other than the calibrated speedo in the car, uh, but you know, more scientific ways to do this, but you can tell that within even our kind of uh, sloppy tolerances, there's a massive obvious difference between no ABS, ABS, and 
ABS with threshold braking, at least today with these tires and this driver and that car. So uh, hopefully you learned something and had a good time. If you're into this kind of thing, we're happy to do more. If you've got any questions, if you're like, hey, what would happen if you do this? What's in a truck or in the snow or whatever? We've got some more videos on the channel. Check it out. Consider subscribing and, and you know, do the thumbs up deal. It does help out. Uh, and if you want to do some driving yourself, get some coaching, do some training, try some of this out for yourself in different cars, check out Team O'Neill Rally School, teamoneal.com. We run courses all year round, um, not necessarily in cop cars all the time, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, Subarus, Fiestas, rear wheel drive, BMW, W's, drift cars, whatever you're into, uh, we're playing with cars a lot. So check it out. We hope to see you. Till then, stay safe, get to get out of the rain, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.